So, the sun's out. And if the sun's out, that means it's beach weather. And if it's beach weather, that means it's astronomy weather. And more than that, tonight is the night of Saturn's opposition. So, I'm gonna go put my nine and a quarter Celestron OTA back on. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to collimate because the first thing I do before any planetary session is collimate. Um, planetary in particular, you're at very high focal lengths. So the more you're zoomed in or magnified on the, uh, on the target, the more any kind of aberration with the mirrors or misalignment is gonna show up as a uh, poor focus. God, my bird is going crazy. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to show you here. So in here at the front of the OTA, uh, you'll notice that you normally have the three collimation screws here. Of course, this is the faster uh, capable mirror that you can pull out so you can put your hyperstar on if you need to. Uh, but I've taken off those screws and I've replaced them with a product called Bob's Knobs. Uh, now Bob's Knobs is a method where you can tweak these collimation screws um, easily without having to get a screwdriver out or anything like that. And that's really helpful uh, when you're there in the dark trying to fiddle with all of this stuff. Finding screw holes is difficult. Uh, however, it should be noted that these are much looser than having the collimation screws themselves. So if you do go for Bob's Knobs, uh, you want to make sure that you collimate more often than you would if you just had the screws. Okay, I'm going to go outside and set this up and finally enjoy some astronomy weather. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. This video on collimation is sponsored by High Point Scientific. So big thanks to High Point Scientific for their support. They offer free technical support for their customers, lifetime support on the products they sell, and they have a price match guarantee. And I do mention Bob's Knobs in this video, and they sell a whole range of Bob's Knobs there as well. So be sure to check out High Point Scientific. So a little tip here if you've got uh, some sort of backyard observatory like me is you need a moisture absorber. You need something to uh, absorb all of that humidity. I'm using this damp rid stuff. Uh, we've had a lot of rain lately, but you can see that because of that, sun's out today and all of this is wet. And that can really damage your electronics, that condensation. Well, I think I'm all set up and ready to go. Uh, as you saw before, I did fiddle with the collimation screws, the Bob's Knobs collimation screws. So technically this scope is out of collimation, which is a stupid thing to do. And I hated doing that as I was doing it, but I did it because I wanted to do it for you. You know it's true. Everything I do, I do it for you. I do it for you. Fingers crossed. And we're back in the observatory and it's night time. Was that transition cool? So I've got my camera on and I've aligned to Alpha Centauri, which is a really bright star. Um, you want to be doing with this with a bright star if you can. Uh, I don't like collimating with a focal reducer. I prefer a magnifier. So I've got the two and a half times power mate, really long focal length. I'm zoomed right in because that will make any adjustments I make really accurate. Okay, you can see I've got Alpha Centauri on the screen there. You can see it's a little bit out of collimation there. Now we can see the screws and you can see the star on screen. And the trick is knowing which screw we need to adjust for that one side. So a trick you can do is put your hand over one screw or towards one screw and you can see an area on the screen that changes. And that's the thicker side. So now I'll try this screw here. And that's also the thicker side. So I'll try this final screw from this direction. And that's the thin side. And that's the side we want to adjust, the thin side. So find, identify which screw is on that thin side of the, of the airy disc. 
and that's the one we want to adjust. Yeah, you'll notice that as we adjust this, the star is going to move on screen. And this is the trick here. It's a matter of chasing it. Make an adjustment, set it back to the middle again, and try again. Now, here's another little tip um, that helps me when I'm chasing the star around. You notice if I hit the down arrow, the star's going up. If I hit left or right, it goes the opposite direction. So, what I like to do is just flip the hand controller, if you need to, depending on which side of the screen you're on, so that the arrows correspond to the directions that you're pressing. So that's a lot more intuitive and you don't, don't have to think in your head and try and reverse engineer what's going on on screen. So now it's just a matter of me making these changes to the collimation screw, or the knob, the Bob's knob, and then chasing the star around the middle. Make an adjustment, put the star in the middle, and keep going. So I'm going to start making these adjustments to that screw on the thin end and you'll watch it on the screen as I chase it around. And that's looking pretty good now. You're getting a nice even disc. So I'll try and... It's probably not perfectly right yet, so I'll just keep it out of focus and try that adjustment a little bit more. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Another little thing you might have noticed as I did this was if I put my hand in front of the OTA, can you see all the air? Can you see my emissions? There's my hand in front of the mirror. Can you see all the heat just radiating off my hand? That's called Schlier and Imaging. That's something you can set up properly indoors and, and see the cool effects that come off matches and other objects. But I think it's really cool to see the heat radiating off your hand. Uh, and that's a good reason why temperature fluctuations near the telescope are bad news for imaging. Uh, anyway, that's just a side point to this. Now it's all collimated, so now I just have to focus up. And we're good to go. Now while I'm here, I may as well put on the Batman mask. Now I've got that middle beam going across right in the centre of the two diagonal beams. So that's looking pretty good. And I would say now I'm ready to image Saturn. And there she is, ready to go. Uh, now I've got my motorized filter wheel set up here. Uh, so I can do an auto run. And just start that run and it will automatically change the filter. And start recording. Well, I'm getting data, so you know what that means. It's time for beer. Not sponsored, this is just my local brewery. Our local drop, and I just have a problem. Well, it's the cold, hard light of day. I'm up, the effects of the alcohol have worn off. I posted the image last night and it was well received. Uh, when you see the image, note that there is the Seelinger effect, which is the shine of the rings is brighter for these few days during opposition. I don't know how it works, but the light bounces back from the dust and ice in the rings straight back to earth and they do appear vibrant. The rings really appear to glow. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I process that image, uh, which is really very simple and straightforward, here.
and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on collimation. Remember, if you do decide to use bob snobs, just be careful that you don't break your OTA or your secondary mirror. And if you have any doubts about it, maybe check in with your vendor. And if that vendor is High Point Scientific, the sponsor of this video, know that they will support you for buying bob snobs from them. So thank you, High Point Scientific. Uh, thank you everyone who tags me in their photos. I love seeing your work. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.